Uh, okay, in this uh, session, we're going to understand the control uh, variables and uh, phase variables. And then uh, we'll be looking at uh, different breath uh, types uh, before going into basics of uh, how the modes are formed. So in order to understand uh, uh, the uh, ventilator waveforms, we have to uh, know that uh, there are two different variables that are set on the ventilator in each mode. And the first variables uh, uh, are the control variables that uh, could be the volume or uh, the pressure or could be dual uh, control. So in volume control mode of ventilation, uh, the ventilator uh, will control uh, the volume so the machine will uh, try to deliver the set tidal volume and the pressure uh, will increase uh, to overcome the airway resistance and the uh, uh, lung and chest wall uh, elastance. If uh, the uh, lung compliance decrease, for example, the pressure uh, required to deliver the same tidal volume will uh, increase and uh, to maintain that tidal uh, volume uh, as uh, it is set. And uh, in contrast uh, to the volume control uh, mode of ventilation, the uh, pressure control mode of ventilation uh, will uh, deliver a set uh, pressure. This set pressure uh, will result into a tidal volume that is dependent on the respiratory system uh, resistance and compliance. And notice the difference in the uh, flow waveform where uh, it was square wave uh, in uh, volume control mode of ventilation. In pressure control mode of ventilation, it is uh, decelerating uh, waveform. And if the compliance of the lung decreased in pressure control mode of ventilation, the uh, machine will deliver the same uh, set pressure and that will result into a lower tidal volume uh, uh, based on the equation of motion. The second thing that uh, we need to understand is the phase variables and those phase, phase variables are specific to the delivered breaths. Uh, so the first uh, thing is uh, you need to know that each breath uh, uh, needs to be delivered, uh, uh, there is a trigger. And that trigger could be uh, time if the uh, breath is mandatory or controlled, meaning that the patient is doing no efforts at all. That's why you don't see any uh, negative deflection in the pressure here or any increase in the flow here. This breath started after a set time has elapsed. That's why we call the trigger here is the time. In contrast uh, to this uh, breath here, where the uh, uh, trigger for the breath is patient's initiation of efforts. And here the machine is set to sense for any flow. Once this flow reaches a certain uh, level that is set usually by the operator, the breath is triggered. And uh, in this breath here, it's actually the machine, it is also initiated by the patient, but the sensitivity here is towards pressure drop in the circuit. So there is a set level again for that pressure that we call it sensitivity level. Once the patient creates a negative pressure reaching this set level, at that time, this negative pressure Will trigger, will trigger the initiation of the, uh, uh, of the breath. Now, after the breath is initiated, the, there could be another var var variable that is set on the machine that we call it the limit variable. That limit variable could uh, be a limitation for the pressure, so the pressure would go up to a certain level and will be maintained, such as in pressure support, uh, supported breath, uh, the, the limitation is on the pressure uh, and the pressure will not go up higher than this uh, level. 
It could be uh, also flow limited where the, the, the flow goes up to a certain value and does not uh, go above this uh, value. So you can see the constant flow here has a limitation. So, and uh, it could be uh, volume limited where the volume would reach a certain value and then it does not uh, increase above that value. You need to differentiate between the control and the limit. The control is the intention of the machine to deliver either volume or uh, pressure. But at the same time, you can have a limitation on the pressure where it is volume control mode of ventilation. So the third variable is how is the breath ended? So the first was the initiation of the breath. The second was the limitation of the pressure flow or uh, volume between the initiation and the uh, end. And the third variable is the uh, end of the breath or what we call cycling or changing from inspiration to expiration. So that could be very simple. You can set a time and then after that time is elapsed, the pressure is released and the uh, breath is ended. So this would be time cycled as opposed to uh, setting the cycle based on the volume. Once you reach a certain volume, immediately after that, the pressure is released and the exhalation starts. And uh, you notice here that uh, uh, if it is set for time, you can uh, finish uh, the uh, um, inspiratory flow. You can deliver the tidal volume, but the time is not elapsed yet for the uh, inspiration. That's why the uh, breath goes into a holding period, which, you, which we call the, the plateau period. And uh, that volume is inside the lung. The flow is zero, and there is a pressure here required to overcome the lung and chest wall elastins. The cycling mechanism could be also uh, flow, such as in pressure support uh, uh, breath, uh, the uh, pressure is released uh, or the inspiration is ended once uh, the flow reaches a certain uh, value compared to the peak inspiratory uh, flow. Uh, this value could be 25%. Once we reach 25% of that peak inspiratory uh, flow, so once the inspiratory flow, flow reaches this value, at that time the pressure is released and the uh, uh, breath is cycled. It could also be a set pressure. Once you get to that pressure, you, the, the, the pressure goes back to uh, zero and the uh, expiration starts. At the same time, you may have a, a flow cycled mechanism with, uh, with uh, a backup time cycle, uh, just in case the patient does not reach that certain value that we talked about in the pressure supported breath here. If the patient does not reach that within a certain uh, backup time uh, mechanism, at that time, the time uh, cycle will be activated and the pressure was, will be released based on the um, time uh, cycling mechanism. So with this uh, in mind, we would be able to uh, understand four different types of breaths. So the first one is a breath that is initiated by the patient and ended by the patient. You can see here a negative pressure, meaning that the machine did not do anything in between. And the flow is a sinusoidal uh, uh, waveform. This is uh, the uh, characteristics of uh, spontaneous breath. So initiated by the patient, ended by the patient, and the machine did nothing uh, in between. As compared to a breath that is initiated by the patient, which is patient triggered, it could be, as we said, uh, pressure or flow triggered. Once the breath is triggered, uh, the machine will give the pressure and there is a limitation on the pressure. So uh, the pressure gets to that uh, level and stays at this level for the duration of inspiration and the cycling mechanism for this breath would be flow once the flow reaches certain level compared to the peak inspiratory flow at that time the pressure is released this uh, breath is uh, called supported breath 
Now let's just uh, go to the mandatory breath or the controlled breath. This is uh, started by time. The patient does nothing. Uh, so after a certain time, is elapsed could be five seconds or six seconds. And this is actually set by the rate. So if you set a rate at uh, 12 per minute, that means every five seconds there is a breath. So the trigger here would be the time. And uh, you can control the flow here. And this is uh, volume control uh, breath. And you can cycle by time uh, or by volume. And this would be mandatory breath. So time triggered, uh, uh, flow. Uh, limited or controlled and uh, time uh, cycle breath is uh, characteristic uh, is the characteristics of uh, um, are the characteristics of mandatory breath uh, now the same breath here that is started uh, by time and the machine delivered the control which is the tidal volume here and you can see how it is uh, delivered with a square wave flow if this breath is started by the patient, so this is patient triggered, and the machine delivered the same control, uh, give the uh, volume uh, that is set on the machine, we call this assisted breath. So the only difference between the assisted breath and the mandatory breath is the initiation or the trigger. Here it's time trigger, uh, triggered. Here it is patient triggered, could be flow or uh, pressure. Of course, the mandatory or the assisted uh, breath could be either volume cycled or time cycled. So this way we appreciate that uh, we have only four different type of press uh, in any of uh, the modes that we're going to be dealing with, either spontaneous breath, supported breath, assisted breath, or mandatory breath. And that if we put all this together, we get the breath sequences. So. In a continuous mandatory ventilation, uh, all the breaths are uh, time triggered and uh, uh, the machine will deliver the control that could be volume or uh, uh, pressure and the cycle would be either time in most of the uh, ventilators or in some ventilators you can cycle based on the volume. This is uh, continuous uh, mandatory ventilation. So now the second graph here, you can see that this is intermittent mandatory ventilation and the patient in between is having some spontaneous uh, press. And this spontaneous press could be also supported with a pressure support and you get pressure supported press in between. And this press here could be synchronized with patient's effort and be delivered at the same time where the patient is breathing so it will be assisted or synchronized breath and this way a mode of SIMV will be formed. If all the breaths are spontaneous breath uh, this would be uh, continuous spontaneous ventilation and of course you can support any of this uh, spontaneous breath by pressure support and this uh, will transform the mode into pressure support mode of ventilation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending this uh, uh, brief session and uh, hope to see you in future uh, ICU REACH uh, sessions. Thank you.